The next step in describing our functions is going to be to talk about when our functions are said to be increasing and when they're said to be decreasing. This is going to become the underlying premise of a lot of analysis that we do later graphically in this calculus course. So this is a first step to laying the foundation for our graphical analysis. So in calculus and in mathematics, a function is said to be increasing if the values of the dependent variable increase as the values of the independent variable increase. So what does that mean? One of the key things here is that we're talking about what happens as the independent variable increases. So for the sake of discussion, let's consider the independent variable to be x. So we're talking about what happens as the x values go up. As the x values go up, the y values go up. That's what it means to be increasing. Consider a graph. Think about what you think an increasing function would look like. Got it? Okay, well now I'm gonna draw one. Here, we read a graph from left to right. So if we're talking about what happens as the x values go up, we're talking about what happens as we look from left to right. And as we look from left to right, we can see that the y values are going up. So therefore, that function is said to be increasing. There's a lot of different ways that functions can increase. They can look like I just drew on the first picture, which is pretty linear. They can be curved in many ways. But as long as they're going up from left to right, then that picture indicates that they're increasing because as the x values go up, the y values go up. Similarly, a function is said to be decreasing if the values of the dependent variable decrease as the values of the independent variable increase. I want you to notice that this last line is the same as before because what we're always doing when we're evaluating what's happening is determining what's happening as the x values increase. So for all tests that we do, whether they're on a table or a function or a picture, we ask what happens as x goes from left to right or from small to big as they get bigger? What happens to that y value? If the y values go up, we're increasing. But if they go down, that means that we're decreasing. So here, let's again look at a picture. So again, we're asking what happens as we move from left to right. And you can see that those y values are going down. So that is a decrease in function. And again, it doesn't have to be linear. There's lots of ways a function can decrease. But the key here is that as the x values get bigger, the y values get smaller. They're going down from left to right. So that's what it means to be a decreasing function. So one of the important things that comes with this is what happens when you change from increasing to decreasing. So as a side note, if you have a function that does both increasing and decreasing, so for example, something that looks like this, at this point, the point where we change from increasing to decreasing, we consider that point to be constant. So at that particular moment, when you've reached a point where you're going to change from either increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing, that one point is constant because it doesn't do either at that moment. That's the point where we're changing. So that's the word we use here. So let's look at some examples of increasing and decreasing and see if we can figure out how to do this on our different functions. So let's start with our formula, x squared minus 2x minus 3. So if you remember from earlier, we tested a whole bunch of points in this function to see what it was doing. That's also a good idea for a case like this, to get a general sense of what's happening. But even better would be to graph this function. So again, when you're graphing a function, you can plug in some points, check, see what's happening, to get a general sense of what's going on. You can also use a graphing calculator when you're doing your homework to figure out what this function may look like. So here, if we plug in a few points, we know that f of 0, which means we're going to plug in a 0 everywhere we see an x, is going to give us negative 3. f of 1, if we plug in a 1 everywhere that we see an x, we're going to get negative 4. If we plug in a 2 everywhere we see an x, we're going to get negative 3 again. If we plug in some negative numbers here, 
If we plug in a negative 1, we're going to get negative 1 squared, which is 1, plus 2 is 3, minus 3 is 0. And if we plug in a 3 here, 3 squared is 9, 9 minus 6 is 3, 3 minus 3 is 0. So we have a function, and squared functions take on a shape that's called parabolic. Okay, so it's going to look like a U or an upside down U. It's a parabola. And we know that it's going to cross through at negative 1, x equals negative 1, and x equals 3. Those are intercepts. So at negative 1 and at 3, we have our intercepts. And then here, we also have a vertical intercept at negative 3. So when x equals 0, we're going to cross through at negative 3. So we'll label that. But we can also see that we go down further than negative 3. We actually come down to negative 4, which is right around here. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's a basic U shape here. And we know that this continues going up on both sides forever and ever. And then here at the point 1, negative 4, we end up finding the minimum of our graph. Now, this is important because in order to determine where we're increasing and decreasing, we need to figure out where we turned around. So here, if you look at this picture, again, when you read a graph or when you consider increasing or decreasing, you're considering what happens as the x values move from left to right. This function had a domain of all real numbers, which means that we're starting on the left-hand point of negative infinity. So from negative infinity all the way until x equals 1, our function is decreasing because it's moving in the downward direction from left to right. Don't let the arrow on the end confuse you. That just means that the graph continues up. We read the graph from left to right. So we're moving from left to right, and we're looking at what our function's doing. The y values are coming down. So that means that we are decreasing. So we are decreasing. So we are decreasing from negative infinity all the way until x equals 1. When we talk about where things are happening, on a graph when we're describing things. And we're talking about intervals where things are happening. We describe them in terms of their x values. The x values help us locate where on the graph we're talking about things. So when we talk about increasing or decreasing, we're gonna talk about where the independent variable is when those things are happening. So here, that's from negative infinity all the way until x equals one. But then at one, our graph turns around and as we move from left to right away from one, you can see that the y values are going up. So that means that from one all the way to infinity is where my function is increasing. So I'm gonna be decreasing from negative infinity until one in terms of the x values, and then increasing from one to infinity. I want you to notice that I use strictly less than and greater than signs and not equal to. Remember, we talked about how we use strict inequality signs with our infinities. We never use the equal to with infinities. And at one, at that point, we're constant, which means that at one, we're not increasing or decreasing, so we don't include it in either of our intervals. So now, let's go ahead and take a look at this on a table. So if we want to look at where a table is increasing or decreasing, again, we're considering what happens as x gets bigger. The way that tables are set up are increasing values of x. So it's already set up for us to analyze where it's increasing or decreasing because the x values are lined up sequentially getting bigger. So what we need to do is we need to consider what the y values are doing. So my first y value is 37, then 27, then 19, then 3. 
So those values are continually going down. They don't stop and turn around and come back up. They could. We could have parts that were increasing and decreasing. But in this case, these numbers continue to go down. So this function for this table is decreasing everywhere. And we can write that. We can say decreasing everywhere. Okay, so when you have a table, you need to look at the dependent values and see whether they're going up or going down. And that will tell you where that table of data is increasing or decreasing. When we have a graph, we're going to look at the intervals to determine where they're going up and where they're going down. So here, I can separate out the spots where things are turning around, and that will help me define my intervals. So again, I'm going to go from left to right. So the first interval here is going to go from negative 2 to about negative 1.1. So from negative 2 to negative 1.1, my function is decreasing because that function's moving downward in terms of the y values as I move from left to right. Okay. My next interval, which is going to be negative 1.1 up to 0, that interval is increasing because it's going in the upward direction as I move from left to right. My next interval, 0 to 1.1, is again decreasing because I'm moving downward from left to right. And then 1.1 to 2, I'm again increasing because I'm moving upward from left to right. So again, I could have used my inequality notation, but I can also use my open parentheses, my open interval notation, to note the same thing. So here again, I'm going to use open parentheses because at the point where I turn around, I do not include that point. So here, I can see the intervals where I'm increasing and decreasing and read them right off the graph. Finally, I want to look at some word problems and determine if I can figure out where they are increasing or decreasing. So let's start with the ice cream shop. Remember, the cost of our ice cream is given by C equals 5 plus 0.25 T. And so here, my T values are going to vary from 0 to 10. So if I plug in 0, I get C equals 5. If I plug in 1, I get C equals 5.25. Remember, we did this with domain and range. So then, if I plug in T equals 3, I'm going to get 5.75, so on and so forth. I can see by the setup of this problem that as I plug in various values of T, my C values are going up and up and up. So this function is increasing. Since there's no places where I stop increasing or I start decreasing, I can just say in general that the function is increasing. Similarly, if I come down to my popcorn example, my function was that r equals 6 times p. Remember, r is revenue, the amount of money I take in, and p is the number of popcorn bags that my vendor sells. So here, P can take on integer values starting at zero and going up to who knows how high, however many bags of popcorn she can hold in a night. So zero, one, two, three. As I plug in those numbers, my R's continue to go up by a factor of six. So when P equals zero, R equals zero. When P equals one, R equals six. If I were to graph this, I would see it's a linear increasing function that has a slope of 6. So here, again, in this scenario, my function is an increasing function. So when I'm determining whether functions are increasing or decreasing, I'm always considering what happens as my independent variable increases. What happens to the dependent variable?